In this video, we are going to talk about wrapper classes. Uh, wrapper classes are something that's provided for working with our primitive types. So what were our primitive types in Java? They are the types that are not made from classes. They are built in types. Okay. So we have Booleans, our primitive types, character, our primitive types, shorts, bytes, integers, longs. They're all integer uh, primitive types. Okay. Float and double are floating point primitive types in Java. Okay. Notice string is not in there. In some languages, string is considered a primitive type. Or in some languages, all these things are made uh, and considered objects. But in Java, they are not objects. They are primitive types. Okay. So um, I shouldn't be saying that because these are the wrapper classes. So when we talk about integer, a lot of times we use int, right? That's the primitive type that's associated with integer. Okay. Uh, for doubles, double with a lowercase d is the primitive type, and this is the wrapper class that goes with it. So what is a wrapper class for? A wrapper class is a class that surrounds the primitive type so that we can perform methods on it, so that we can do things with it, or we can convert things. Um, so let's look at some examples. Here is the integer and double classes. Since we use ints and doubles uh, mostly for our numerical types, uh, we tend to default to integer and double in Java. Um, we'll pay attention to those two wrapper classes, integer and double. So if we look, uh, Integer has a couple fields in it. It has a max value uh, constant and a min value constant. Those hold, uh, those are those are static constants that hold the minimum or maximum value that an integer can hold. Uh, same thing with double. We have a min value and max value, and you can use those in your code. Uh, if you're using an integer spelled out, not an int, or a double spelled out with an uppercase D. Um, we have some constructors. Integer can take an int or a string. And we have some methods, some other methods like byte value, short value, int value, long value. I went that one spelled wrong incorrectly there. Uh, float value, double value. Uh, we also have a compare to to compare integers to other integers. And we have a two string method because every class should have a two string method, right? And then we have some value of and, and some conversion methods. Uh, parse int is another one. And basically those same things for doubles. And if we would look at the short class and the long integer class, you would see all these same things. These wrapper classes were designed so that we can work with our um, built-in types. Uh, and we can work with them like they were uh, objects. So the integer class and the double class both have constructors. They both have class constants called max value and min value. They both have conversion methods built in. Um, they have constructors, which can take an int or a string in the case of an integer. A double can take a double or a string to create a double. And they have those minimum, maximum value constants built in. So let's explore some of these. Before I go any further, let's explore some of these. First of all, let's just create an int. So I'm going to create an int called, um, I hate using single letter variables, but I'll do it for this one. Int x equals 5. All right, so I have this int x, it's equal to five. What if I want to do int and do some method? It doesn't work. I get a red squiggly here. I can't call any methods, uh, or excuse me, x dot. Notice that autocomplete's not popping up here with any options of um, methods that I can run on my int x. However, if instead of using int, I use the wrapper class 
integer. Okay. Now when I hit dot, I get all those methods that we talked about. I have a compare to method, an int value, a long value, a short value, a two string. I have all these methods uh, that I can run on my int because um, I'm using the wrapper class rather than the primitive type of int. So if I want to do x dot two string I can certainly do that print line x dot two string five there we go okay so it converted my five integer uh, to a string and printed it out now you might say well we've been doing that the whole time and we never had to when we did a number we never had to put a two string after it and you're right we didn't because Java does something called auto boxing. So when we try to use a primitive type as a string or print it out with a string, Java automatically takes that primitive type, uh, puts it inside its wrapper class and calls a two string for us because we do it a lot and it saves us some steps. So Sometimes Java does auto boxing to automatically wrap our primitive types uh, to perform some function on them uh, so that we don't have to do it manually. So that's auto boxing when it happens. Now let's take a look. Um, let's go back here. Uh, the max value that an integer can hold. Let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, max value, max underscore value. So let's print out, that's a static. So we're gonna look at the integer class and call it static field max underscore value. Okay, max underscore value. That's the static field built into the integer class that will tell us the maximum value that an integer can hold. And we've probably talked about that number before. Uh, if we look at min value, okay, we get negative, almost the same amount. I think it's one higher there. Uh, so we can see the minimum maximum value that an integer can hold. Sometimes those come in handy uh, uh, for different things. Like if you're trying to find the maximum integer in a bunch of integers, you can set the initial value to the minimum value that an integer can hold and everything else is guaranteed to be bigger than that. Uh, that's one place where we could use that miniature, uh, minimum value or maximum value. Let's look at some conversion methods. So let me create a string. Um, I'm gonna call it my number but it's a string, right? Equals one, two, three, four, five. Okay. What if I wanna do some math with that? Let's take integer um, result equals x plus my number. Okay. Um, we have a problem incompatible types because a string can't be converted to an int so what do we have built in to the integer class that would help us with that and we have parseInt so parseInt lets us specify a string and change it to an integer so we could be getting input from a user maybe the input comes in as a string or we read it from a file as a string we can use parse int to convert it to a number. So let's go back and do that in our code. Um, so I can call from the integer class, I can call dot parse int and pass it that string that maybe I asked, I, I made it manually here, but maybe I got it from a user. I gotta spell integer right. So parse int will 
take that string, try to parse it as an integer, convert it to an integer so that I can use it in here and get it in my result. And we'll print out the result here. And everything works just fine. Ah, no, it didn't. Or yes, it did. One, two, three, four, five, plus five, the 45 and five to that, I get one, two, three, five, zero. I was expecting something different there for a second. I don't know why. All right. So uh, we also have double value, float value, int value, long value, and short value, which are defined in the number class. Uh, so each of these primitive types inherit those from the number class. It's the parent class. We'll talk a little bit more about inheritance. So because they're specialized numbers, they all have double value, uh, float value, int value, and long value built in. Um, they will convert uh, objects into their primitive types. Now you might go back to our code here and say, uh, but this was an integer this is an int and this was an integer okay so what happened here how come we can use the class integer and the primitive type int okay so what happened here is auto boxing again uh, java automatically converted uh, everything on the right side into an int uh, using probably int value would be because we're using with integers now so that it could do the math and store it in an int. Uh, so there, that's another case of int value actually works. Uh, so let's, let's do an example. Let's, before we print the result, let's, let's print, um, x dot um, double value i'm going to do double value okay okay and so x was five but because i used double value it gave me the value of that integer as a double and it did a conversion for me so it converted my int to a double um, i could have also done int value and it just gives me five Okay. And when I did, as I said before, when I did my result, when I did this math, it automatically took my integer object uh, and did an int value on it so that it could add it. Excuse me, this one did int value on it so it could add the two together and store them as an int. Auto boxing did it for us, but we can also do it manually. Java also has a static value of methods that we can access. So we can call the double class and ask it to get the value of, and it will take whatever we put in quotation marks. Uh, so it's kind of like parsing. Uh, it'll take whatever we have inside. If it's a string, it will convert it to a number uh, of type double. Uh, it will also do the same thing. Integer has a value of as well, as long as we're passing it proper values it will convert it as well. And then we already talked about parse double. Uh, we've talked about parse int. And then here's the slide that talks about automatic conversion between primitive types and wrapper class types. So this started in uh, the Java development kit 1.5, which was a long time ago. It allows primitive type and wrap, uh, wrapper classes to be converted automatically. Java just takes care of it. So here's an example, and we've done this with arrays already. Uh, int array is an array of integers, so we're using the class name here, the wrapper class name, uh, and we're creating a new integer uh, using the constructor from the integer class, a new integer four and a new integer three. It's the exact same thing as if we do this, integer array, array of integers called int array, equals and we say two four three these are primitive types but java automatically wraps them in the integer class so that it can create this int array of integers so we've been making use uh, 
kind of said this in earlier videos about this chapter. A lot of the things in here we've been using and we just didn't know the technical de details behind it. Uh, and this chapter is trying to uh, sort some of that out, showing you that this whole idea of object-oriented programming, you've been using it, Java's been using it, and it's been happening in the background the whole time. But you can also manually do it if you need to. Um, and that'll wrap it up for this video. Uh, in the next video, I think we're going to start talking about... Uh, strings some more things that we can do with strings because strings are objects as well we may not always think of them as strings although i tend to talk about it earlier than a lot of the books do um, so we'll look at strings and then we're going to look at regex after that uh, and maybe a video on string builder since i've already talked about it <laughs>